else, right? It, it, it stresses it out and tears it. And, and then you rest, so you're sleeping. And only when you're sleeping does the body goes in, it sees the rips in your cell, and then in, in, in fixing it, it's, um, it's actually it creates new muscle, right? So you tear, then it fixes. Tear fixes, so you grow your muscle by the existing cells being torn. And then as you sleep, the repair adds more muscle to, uh, to fill in the tears that are there. That's the way you grow your muscle, through stress. Um, it, it, I mean, isn't this a fun saying, if there's no pain, there's no gain, really. It has to rip your muscle then you go to bed. If you don't sleep, it doesn't happen. So, so it isn't just the protein and the exercise to, to, um, um, to stress it and rip it, it's the sleep because that's when the chemical processes stuff happen for it to fix the rip and add tissue and, and cells that grows your muscle. Then you do it over and over again. I is not one trip to the gym is gonna make you buck, right? <laughs> That it takes, so it's eat, exercise, rest, and repeat over and over. That's how it works. I, I'm, I'm sure like the sports athlete, like Iron Mike, he does that, right? But for some reason, as Christians, we think we can just come to church or read our Bibles once and be bulk. Like, I'm a bulk Christian, no. So in order to grow our spiritual muscles too, we need to do the same thing, eat, exercise, Rest and repeat. Over eat, exercise, rest, repeat. Eat, exercise, rest, repeat. And, and just keep uh, um, doing that over and over. And if we look back on the scripture that we read, it says to be strong. Right? And the Hebrew word there, man, is kazakh. Right? Um, Hold fast. So the word I, I, I mean like you're holding fast, you're being strong. The interesting part of that word that I like or the uh, uh, so the connotation to this word is that it's, it's, it's to play the man, right? So um, it's almost like saying you have to know, pull up your socks, right? Hold, hold strong, hold fast, be strong, don't let go, play the man. Like it may look scary, you're not a kid anymore, but you have to face this thing, right, and prevail. Uh, so Kazakh, Kazakh, um, at, at the end of every reading in Jewish uh, um, terminology, they, they, they would read the word and after they're done, they say Kazakh, Kazakh, right? Um, give me strength, give me strength to hold on to this word, right? So be strong and of good courage for unto this people, Right, this generation, us, us in here, this people, right? It, it, uh, um, God was speaking to Joshua under these people right here. Um, shall thou divide the land? Right, it, it, it's been hundreds of years in the making from Abraham to them, like 400 plus years, 500 plus years. That's what they've been hearing, but now it was time to get the inheritance that they had heard about, which I swear to give to your fathers. Moses is dead, right? He can't depend on, on him anymore. I, can't, I, 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 I bet after 40 years of the same preacher, teacher, judge, he was preacher, teacher, judge, doctor, he's everything. And, and now at the opportune time that they're actually supposed to go in the promised land, he, he, he's dead. I got it to say to Joshua and in no uncertain terms that hey, Moses, my servant, is is dead. No, no, it's you. <laughs> like at times you're like, ah, uh, yeah, um, and you starting to search around the room, and you're like, no, I'm talking to you now. It's, it's, it's going to be you that has to fix this. He said after the death man of Moses, the Lord, um, if it came to pass, the Lord came and spoke to Joshua. In verse 2, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. No, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan. Right? Okay. There are certain things I, re I remember about church in Jamaica or church in the past. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's dead. Right? It's gone. I, there are people that I knew that were, 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 were strong in the Lord. 
it, 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 it no, it's up to me and you and everybody here, right? So it, that's the thing he was interested. Is dead now? You go over and take this people across the Jordan, right? And 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 then he said that in, ver, um, in verse um, and in verse five, which we didn't read, but it says, "There shall not any man be able to stand in your way." So he, he's saying go, right? But he's also saying. I, I'm giving you some sort of, sort of assurance that as you go, there won't be anyone to stand in your way. And why is that? Be, uh, all the days of your life, as I was with Moses in verse five, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. At times we put our, our confidence in people and not in the God that was in that person. And even though that person isn't is there anymore, God is still here. So say that like he's gone, but he said, but I'm still here. And I will be with you to go over this Jordan, right? So he said, um, and also, so he's going to be unstoppable. There won't be anyone to to uh, to stand in his way at all, right? And and, and so Kazakh, he he, uh, he has a good a, um, a good reason to be um, brave and strong and of good courage because God is going to be with him as he as he goes. Right, and then in verse seven again, he's saying, "Only be thou strong and very courageous." Right. So the first time he, he was saying strong is to be able to go. Right. Sometimes we have, um, um, I call it, uh, uh, me and, and physics call this inertia. Right. To start something, you're afraid to start. You're afraid to breach a subject. You're afraid to start a conversation. So um, I, I, um, he was afraid to go across the Jordan, right? So I mean, takes care of that part of being strong, and then now he's saying, "Only be those strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law." He didn't say some of the law, right? To do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. So they had 40 years in the wilderness to practice this. Um, and even God said this, I was testing you to see if you would live by every word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. He didn't say some. See this? But, but by every word that proceeds out of the, the mouth of God. All the law. Everything God said we're supposed to do. But it's so easy today, man, man, I listen to this all the time, and I'm like, which God are they talking about? That oh, we're not able to keep this habit. My mom used to tell me that. And, and I love my mom, and she, she, she and I uh, um, might have grown close until she tell me now that I'm the only one that can invite her to a Sabbath church. Because I said, why? Because she said, I see how you live. Right? There's a difference there. Right? But at, at, at first she was like, the, and her and other people say there's there is nobody that can keep this habit. Or, or people would say there is no one that can keep all of what God says. So is God a mean person? He's telling the children of Israel that they should do all that he's saying, and I, I, um, and is is that not possible? Um, is they say this? <laughs> Just that way, but there's, there's probably more people online than they are here. Oh, but we okay. have people that are watching you there. Okay. And just okay. so you know, it's not going to waste. Oh, no, no, no. I, and we're, we're recording back there also. Okay. Okay. So we'll okay thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. He said to do all that I'm supposed to do. And and um, and um I I'm sad when pastors get on the pulpit and try to give people excuses to do the wrong thing. Right, so oh, oh, he understands your heart. He knows that. Just um, and it's fine to, to, to do your best, but don't ever have the image that I I don't have to do everything that God says to me. He's saying it here that they had to do. It, it, I wouldn't need to be be strong. He wouldn't be telling Joshua to be strong if it was easy. If it was some of the law, then he. I don't have to be strong to do that. But, but he said, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do all of the law. 
it's like I'm hearing, um, um, I'm in school and I'm hearing there's a test coming and you put up your hand in class and ask the, um, ask the teacher, which of the chapters are going to be in the test? All of the chapters. <laughs> and which sections? All of the sections. And then he continues, turn not from the right hand or the left that thou mayest prosper. And there's no curve for this test. There's no curve. I can't go to the right or left because of society and Oprah says, and he, she says, and, and the president, no, no. You can't turn to the right or to the left, Mr. Joshua. You, you and this takes a, a strength to be careful, to observe all God's law takes strength. It's not for the puny. <laughs> it takes strength to be able to take on this, this command, it is a command, to do all that God has us to do. So how do you do that? Right? Like, how do you do that? And I'm glad for the word of God because it, it answers itself when a lot of time. And, and here we get a glimpse of how this is going to work, right? So it says to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt what? Meditate therein when? Day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to, again, all that is written therein. For then shall, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. Right? It's hard to do something that you don't understand. Right? And, and it's hard to understand something that you don't remember. Right? So we know the parable that Jesus gave with the word, and some people get excited immediately, but then they forget. Sun comes, or the other one, it's there, but it didn't have root because it's stony. They didn't understand the word, so it bears, it dies a bit. Um, and no fruit. Here's the thing that God was saying to Joshua that he should not let it come out of his mouth but keep it, it shall not depart. So he's, he's saying it every day. He's verbally saying it every day, but thou shalt meditate. The interesting thing about this word in Hebrew, um, haga, is that it means to, um, um, to mutter. So I lived in New York for a while. I did school and everything in New York. Uh, like I started my adult life in New York. And I, I see the Jews on the train and they are doing this. Yeah, um, it's too, I can hear it if I go close, but you can't hear it. Here. They are, are repeating and they have books of things that they go over every day, right? Of, of laws to read and Psalms to read and say every day. And there is a, a, a there are, um, or studies on this, but to read your Bible is great but to read it and say at the same time, to verbally enunciate, I, I guess is, uh, and even if it's too many whisper, it, um, there might be a study out there again that says it, it adds to your being able to remember. I don't know if the uh, association of the vibration against your chords in your vocal uh, um, system or what, but it helps you to re remember more. And now also the other thing is that it also soothes you, right? If you're saying it, and this is the intention of this word that you, you are saying it every day in small pieces, right? To understand because man, at this point, He's the only one that has a copy of the law anyway, right? But, and, um, and, and he, had, he had the responsibility to read it for himself, that's one. But as Paul um, advised elders in the future to do, is that you have to do public reading for others that don't have the Bible to hear. So the, the, uh, as I highly encourage in churches the, the idea to read the word in a group together, out loud in public, and if it takes hours, so what? Right? And 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 Paul ad advises us to, to you shall not depart out of your mouth. You should be saying it all the time. 
at home too, right? I'm at the table before you eat in the car as you're driving, right? He said this, right? You're saying it over and over. And, 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 and the Jews to this day, they are doing this. They find ways to day and night to read and repeat and utter things from the law. Right, so it started from here, right? So he had to break down and meditate day and night, and that would help you to remember, right? If you do it over and over, and this will help you to understand. Because as you think about a thing, and you, um, and you send it over and over again, you say, the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. Um, and you, you remember, I'm a deal with the dishes and you're doing it, but you are thinking of, about it too, because the, the, the other side of this word is, is that I'm saying it softly, but I'm thinking, I'm pondering, I'm studying something out, right? That this adds to your understanding. Um, and he said this too, he said, you, you, you sh but thou shall meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do. Right? So it's almost like a process where, yeah, I'm reading it, I'm, I'm chewing it like a, a cow over and over and over again. Then that helps me to like absorb it almost like the same thing for my, a muscle. You eat the protein and it gets into your system, right? And then it is able to build something later. Then I'm able to do, right? If I, if I skip understanding the word, it's very hard to do it consistently and deeply with meaning. Right, right, so this is the uh, uh, the process I believe that was outlined to Joshua that he may observe to do according for then you should make your way prosperous and then you should have good good success. So is, is there man a couple of key things to kind of learn from these few verses here? Like first, first of all, the Kazakh is to be a man, right, the adult. I have to face this. I have to be strong. I, I, I'm, um, I can't be a wimp. Like sometimes in the media, sometimes I can't watch the news because I'm going to throw up, right? Everybody sometimes is so weak. Like, uh oh, as I said today, the poor and, and you help the poor and, and this and that. Like, come on, be a man. Get a job. <laughs> Go work. Go type a, a, a resume or something. Be, play the part of a man. Prevail. D don't let anything just come in your life, man, and um, and and you quit so easy. Right? Be strong. Be of good courage. So, if we think back, just take a step back and think what is happening here with Joshua. Right? God is telling him to go. Right? And go where? Go into a land that was promised with milk and honey. That's a good motivation, right? To uh, and the other thing about exercising. I'm, I'm told, <laughs> is, is, um, is that you have to have a, a reason and a motivation to drive you, right? Otherwise, you will give up after the second week, right? So the thing that um, almost like the character for Joshua and the people of Israel is that they had in their sights the land that was promised to them, a land flowing with milk and honey. And for a, a long time in my childhood, I thought that this was really milk and honey. But it just means, uh, 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 like, um, the, 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 there'll be grass and dates, right? The grass to feed the, the cow that has the milk, and dates is the thing they use back then to make honey, right? So it, it's, it's good for two types of crops. So it's, um, it's a place that you can plant and get to. So they have the land. And they will be successful. So he, he, he can keep this in his mind as to why he is going to go and, and face these people. And uh, like in the, these things that he had to go across the Jordan to face. And he now has to be strong. And he has to be strong in two ways. He has to be strong, as we said before, to engage, to start, to face the foe, right? En engage, to do something, to go. And he has to be strong to obey. Right. It, 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 I mean, I'm, it's not easy to study for a test that every chapter is included. Right. It's not easy to obey when God is asking you to obey everything. So that takes strength. So he has to obey. And how we got a glimpse of that is that he, he had to not let 
uh, not uh, let not um, the, the word of the Lord to go out of his mouth or to stop being a, a thing that he repeats every day, right? And then he has to not turn, right? The, he, these are the things that he has to do. And the way he does this, he repeats, he mutters, he meditates, he understands, so that the end result, though, is that so that he might do all that God commands him to do, right? At the time we, we stop a part of the process and think that all we need to do is to know. And even further, to understand, to have a right. But no, he said, do this so that you can observe and do. Right? So these are the key lessons that um, we can pick up um, here. And we know the rest of the story though, right? That they went over um, um, to Jer across the river to the wall, and so on and so forth. But a, a point to illustrate to put all, all of this together as a picture, as an illustration. This isn't um, a, 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 a hard and fast way to think of, about this, but just an illustrative way to talk about this. Um, is that they are being strong, not to swing a sword. Right, and and um, to fight, but the strength that they need is actually to carry the presence of God, to obey all that He says. Because, as we know, we, this has been illustrated over and over again in the history of Israel. But if they didn't obey the commandments of God, then even if they had the ark with them in a battle, then they were going to lose. Right, so to think about it in a picture, it, it, it's not the the man that has it on their shoulder that carries the presence of the God. It's really the obedience of the people that ensures that you can. In fact, he said it in the commandment: "Do not take the name of the Lord in vain." And people today they think it means not to say the name Jesus or God over and over, but that's not what it means. Like the, the, the Greek, I mean, the, the Hebrew word here is do not carry the Lord's name in vain, which means if you are, are saying that God lives here and I have his, his standard up, right, as God here, or I have the presence of the ark, um, I have to behave in a way that matches the fact that I call myself a Jew or Christian, or that I claim that I have the presence of God on my shoulder. I can't carry the name of the Lord in vain. So the strength that they needed was the strength of obedience so that they can carry. So it's a spiritual muscle we're talking about, right? The spiritual muscle that they had to build was obedience to all that God asked them to do so that they can carry the name of the Lord in, 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 in a proper way. Because if they don't, then he won't be with them. And he promised, I will be with you so that no enemy will be able to stand before you. Right, you see that? Right, so they have to engage, yes, that's one, but they have to obey. And the strength of obedience is what really carries the presence of the Lord. And we see this all through scripture. We see that like all the kings that we read about in Kings and Samuel um, and Chronicles, the, 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 there's a term that says over and over again, this king turned away from the ways of the Lord or he, he turned left from the, it, it, the, the They thought that there was a curve to this test. Um, and, um, and at the time it even said, uh, I mean, even compared to, to David, that they didn't do like this other king, they turn aside from the ways of the Lord. Over and over again, it, this as a child, um, I think it was man about 13 or 14 when I, I read through Kings for the first time. Um, I mean, I tried before, but always failed. But I actually got through it um, at the 13 or 14. And I'm like, oh my gosh, these guys, I, I'm scared because I, I can see me doing that. Right? Where I'm turning from, I, I, I take my little uh, like, um, um, thing here from the left and a little here from the right um, instead of just going straight in the way. So we see it over and over and then and then we see with Jesus now, the new Joshua because his name 
is, is Joshua, really, right? It's Jesus said to his disciples, well, go and make disciples and do what? Teaching them to observe some things. No, all things. I don't know where we thought it changed. He's saying the same thing to them. They have to now face a culture, right, of unbelievers in Jerusalem and Judea um, and all over the world. And he's saying almost the same thing like what was said to Joshua. No, you have to teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Oh, is, is, um, is that just love? Oh, oh, yes, everything is in love, but it, it says it is the greatest commandment. It's not the only one. Right? There are other things that you express, you show that you love God through. You say, observe all that I have commanded you. Right? And, and I thought about me for a while, so to today, right? I'm thinking, when I was, um, I converted to become a Christian, did anyone teach me all? The commandments. Did anyone teach you all the commandments? Sat with you, as you saw um, the amount of times in the scripture when it says, and Jesus sat with them and showed them from the beginning of the law how he was in it, right? I, I, I never had anyone. So to have you know my passion these days, for the last couple of years, I'm, 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 I'm not as much interested in, in church growth right now, right? In, in growing churches and being there. Uh, I'm more interested in learning how do I, how, how, how do we identify the things to teach people, right? The, the, there has to be a solid base of what do we teach people, right? So man, I, I actually have a class. So you think you, 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 you want to start a church, I call it, right? Uh, um, um, and it's to go through the basics first, B because you also have to understand your calling of what, uh, so I teach you, and then you have to go and turn around and teach others, but you can't do the same thing I do at a time. You have to find your way of teaching and your assignment of, of who are you going to um, um, go and, and, and teach into. Is it youth? Is it adults? Is it outreach? Is it inreach? And so on. So it, teach them to observe all things. It, it stays the same. The standard is still the same with Jesus. He's, he's telling them that this is the standard. Observe all things that I have commanded you to do. So if we think about it, then there are, uh, are um, I'm a kind of two things to think about. To being strong, you just have to be. Be strong, be, right? B, to build your spiritual muscles. And E, to engage opposing culture, right? Um, we just, we, we can't allow um, the culture to just go un unchecked, right? And, and, and um, at, um, at times they say stuff, I'm like, so, uh, so I'm at times when I talk to my family, um, man, about this. I do homeschooling in, in Pennsylvania. I've, I haven't done much of homeschooling since I came here, but we did Proverbs one day, um, and it says, "Don't answer a fool, and, and because he might think he's wise." But it, the next verse also says, "Answer a fool, lest he thinks he's wise." <laughs> right? So. Um, uh, 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 so that is showing in scripture that there's a time to answer full. Uh, so we have to pick our time and our moments and so on and so forth, but it can't go unchecked. Else they think they are smart and they're wise and everything. So um, we have to engage the opposing culture. So how do we um, build our muscles spiritually, right? Um, as, as the same for exercise, we have to have the motivation in front of us. Right, and the first motivation uh, that I can tell is victory over sin. It's, it, it's very tiring to be in the wilderness of sin. As some song says, I've wandered far away from home, now I'm coming home. I'm tired of sin, foot sore and weary. But it's, it's tired. I, 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 so the aspect of, of being at rest from sin, that's a motivation. And that's the gospel. 
right? But people sometimes say the gospel is the burial, uh, resurrection of Jesus, yes. But he preached the gospel. He says he came out from fasting and he said he preached the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. And what is the kingdom of heaven? That God is in control. He rules over your life. And when he does, blessed are the poor, blessed are the this, you are going to have happiness in your life freedom from sin, right? But I, 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 I don't know why some Christians think it's, it's gospel to tell people that, yeah, um, God, he loves you and Jesus did everything for you and just do your best. And, um, and we're all sinners. I, if, if I hear that one more time in church, and yeah, I get it that we were all sinners and we still all struggle, but don't use it as a crutch every time. It's, it's great news to hear that I don't have to be a sinner, right? And, and this is what, um, for me, it, it motivates me to go and, and want to build my spiritual muscle, to study and see and, and rest and all that so that God can help me to bear the fruits that he, he wants. But this is a, a target. And the next target is there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Man, that's going to be awesome. Um, at times I pause and I think of when, when God comes and take over this earth, and renew it, change everything. As Peter said, the elements will melt with fervent heat. So what manner of men are you to be, right? Everything's going to be new. But it won't have space for anything that's not godly, right? So this is a target that, that, that we have a new heaven and a new earth. And there are people out there that God wants us to share this with. This is our motivation as Christians. So the first E, to eat the word, right? It makes sense. You, um, to build your muscle physically, you need protein. To build um, in God, you need his word, right? Either word, you read and you meditate, you mutter, you get an understanding of what it is that the word is saying so that you can do what the word is asking us to do. And, and, and read it out loud. When I tell my son, um, as he does his devotions and he reads the psalm every day, that to read it out loud. Right? So if you can include in your devotional time, um, I, it, it, it don't have to be every day, but it, actually it would be better if it's every day, right? To, to, to read, read out loud the word as you do your devotions, right? And, and hear songs, right? You hear, so it increased any sense that it, you can absorb the word through in any medium, right? Books. You read in it, so it touches your vocal cords. You see in it, you hear in it through songs in, um, um, with, with, with tones of, of music to it. You, we, we, we meditate about it. The other thing I would advise us to do strongly is to be systematic about how we eat, right? Like if you, you're eating for your diet and you're eating like pretzels and, and Skittles and, and you're just all over the place, and um, I'm at times you have to pay to have like a person to come and give you a meal plan. No, you can make your own meal plan, right? You just gotta be smart and sensible and, and, and make sure you're getting all the right mixture of vitamins and, and nutrients that you need. The same thing to being a Christian. Um, I, at times as a pastor, I think, how, how many people have been in church for 10 years and they were only getting vitamin A, for example, right? It, 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 it should be as a pastor, as a father, as a person who's in charge of a household or in charge of yourself to make sure that you're going through all of scripture because it's all going to be on the test. <laughs> anyway, right? And, and so, so, so build a systematic plan for yourself or for your family or for the church that goes through all the word. In, in Judaism, um, then and now, by the age of 12, a child knows all of the Torah, the five books by heart. Why? Because at that age, they focus on only that. And that they go through all of that, they eat it out, just read, eat it out. 
you need up all the time. So find, uh, um, um, and the plans that they have on these apps are okay, right? But at times they're all over the place too. Really think about it and have a systematic way to eat, to study, um, um, I mean, to read the word of God. And, and next, I mean, study too, right? To understand, to break down the things that you're understanding. Um, I'm like, I'm, I'm not a party person per se, right? So what else do I spend my money on, right? Or do you spend your money on buy a, a book that helps with this, to help to, 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 um, to break down the material right of the thing that you need to understand right um so you can eat and meditate on all that you're supposed to do so that's eat right you are reading and, and studying and meditating on the word exercise to live out the word until it forces you to study and discussion to more study and discussion right the same way um of physically when you um, I have to get my rag one second. So the purpose of exercise physically is to rip the cells, right? The muscle cells, to rip them. Where you, uh, so sometimes, uh, uh, like if you're doing weights, the idea I was taught the time I went to gym, like years, years ago, that I could start with a weight of say 10 pounds, for example, right? But, it, but at, um, so you do man a couple of man of reps for 10 pounds, but then you increase it to 15 pounds. This will assure you that the muscle you have currently can handle 15 pounds after you, you've done that much um, um, of, uh, uh, of 10 pounds already. So it forced to tear your muscles because that's how you gain. The tearing is a pain, and, and if you don't have pain, then no gain. It rips. So the same way we have to be applying the word so much until what we know about the word isn't enough anymore. And I got to go study again how to live out more of the word, right? Um, so like in computer programming, as man, I'm sure you, you, um, I, I, um, I could get testimony from Joe, Joe it's, it's, um, it's easy, it's, 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 it's very easy to have a, like, a, um, a, like a code and you, I mean, you write the code um, and, uh, and, and then it's supposed to work. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's supposed to work, right? And then it, 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 it doesn't. Um, and you're like, why doesn't this work? Um, I, 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 like it has to compile, right, for it to work. So um, we have to exercise to rip the thing that we know that we can add more code to um, the thing and then have, have it compiled in our system so that we can do more for God eventually. But it, it, um, it, uh, we have to exercise and rip the things that we currently know um and um and, and and study more because of that right now when we do that that's not it. it um it's not done yet right i could um i could read the word i could um um i could exercise where um i i i outlive i i, I outdo some of the things i know that i want more but i have to rest there's an aspect to where I read and I can't force the fruit to develop on my own. Um, it's called the fruit of the spirit for a reason because it's a product of the spirit. It's produced by the spirit. I read and I exercise and then I have to give space and trust in God to turn his word that I just read into something that... Um, is is fruitful, right? So I, I take a break so that the spirit can make. Right? We have to give place to the spirit to do things in our life. We can't trust only that I'm I'm, I'm going to stay up and read all night. Um, is is um is is one, or I could study 
And that's the only thing that I'm going to do. No, study and pray. Ask God for, for the understanding to do what I can't do. Right? I rest. He works. Right? I, um, um, as Paul would say, I plan and you water, but God gives increase. The, the, the increase of turning the word into action, it can only come from God. I, I, I take a backseat. I, I did everything I can. I read, I studied, right? I, I stretched myself in study to learn other things that I have not applied and lived out before. But now I have to give space for the spirit to turn, to show me something new. To, 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 to as you said earlier, a, a, a fleshy person can't understand the word of God. I really need the spirit to give me that understanding to the point where it becomes an actionable thing in my life, right? I can't act on it until the Holy Spirit illumines, illuminates it in me and produces something in me to turn, change my attitude and my action, right? And then we get to do it all over again because it, do, it just don't take a single a night in prayer to become a strong Christian, right? It, it takes, okay, I go eat again, I, 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 um, uh, if I'm, I'm reading this book of the Bible, um, and that is best, by the way, to choose either a book or some. And then uh, for me, I started with John because I thought that, that John was the best book in the entire Bible. And then I read other books. And I'm like, well, these 18 books are the best books. <laughs> the, 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 the entire Bible is great, but you got to start somewhere, right? And, and, and know that over and over and over and over, Re eat, exercise, rest, repeat, and you see things to, to, to like apply in your life and, 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 and do it over and over and over and over again and thinking about the goal, that the goal is to be strong enough to keep carrying the name and presence of God. That's the goal. And I always want that to be the case. And if that is ever not the case, then I'm in problems. Right. The same way when Israel, they didn't um, have obedience enough to carry the presence of God, then it didn't work out too well for them, did it? Right. So for us, we, 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 we have to always be strong um, in, enough and exercising and eating, right? E eating the word, right? And not the, um, at times, again, um, I'm sorry to be saying things about people, but um, I'm going to turn on the TV sometimes. I can't be bothered. Because the things they call sermons and TV uh, at times is a joke. It's, it's all froth. But so you have to find the protein to eat and then spend time on that and, and dig into that and, and meditate on that. Then rest where the spirit um, it, it changes that into attitudes and actions for you. Then you do it again. But don't just do it, the cycle on things that don't make sense, right? Do the cycle on things that make sense. Thinking and knowing that it's it's so that we can carry the impression. Think about that. To carry the presence of God, the name of God. We, as Christians, we take on the name of being Christ-like, an anointed one. We are supposed to be have a strong life as a Christian to carry around the name of Jesus, the presence of God is being, is being so we have to take this and see that we don't stop. We continually go over and over again until we get it right. And and then I believe we are almost set to engage culture, engage opposing culture, right? Be, be, because I can't face Mike Tyson without God. I, I need my big brother there. Actually, he's going to fight for me. But if I don't carry his presence, he's not there. And I go in a fight and I don't have like Jesus with me or his presence with me, I'm going to get knocked out fast too. <laughs> right? And there's so many things. I, 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 if I start to list the things that are just off about the world and the culture, it just, it, um, and, and I know they're gay preachers and um, um, and people don't think there's a God, of course, that's always been around. Um, and in science, no, even though it's, it's proven now, um, I think a couple of months ago, that the Big Bang could not have been a true thing. But 
people are still hinging on, on things like that, right? But, and, and how do we face culture? Me and my own, I'm not equipped or um, smart enough, as Paul says, um, I don't come to you with persuasion of men, right? I'm, I'm coming to you with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way sometimes I, I, that we can make a mark on other people. On, on Facebook, sometimes, like when I tell my wife, I, I go on Facebook now every six months or so, man, I'm on Facebook. But I'm like, if you ever see me on Facebook often, go and start praying because I'm, I'm going to be causing a lot of problems. If I, I go through, because it wouldn't just be words anymore, right? Everything, if, if I ever go on Facebook and start to post stuff, it is it, um, it, it's going to be stuff that I get directly from God to post, right? And, and the, the, that's based on his presence with me and I challenge and I take it almost like the Ark of Connor, a marker, a march around the walls of Jericho, right? Um, to, to engage a culture, having God with us, to me is the only way to be effective in convincing people to change in the, the things that we see men around us. It, it, um, uh, to beat them over the head won't work. That worked back then when they had to kill the tribes to get the land. But, but now it's to, it says, teach, teach. This is the fight that we have now to teach people. Um, at times that we get upset, that like, why are people so idiot and they don't know stuff? And like, um, man, God kind of, uh, um, I mean, my thoughts um, about God said, dude, this is your opportunity to teach. Some people don't know, so you have to teach. And it don't always mean I have to teach that God, uh, I'm a chalkboard. I, I mean, my life could be a lesson to somebody, right? My actions could be a lesson. And at times, yes, you have to literally teach. And then for some reason, some church um, don't believe that God can do anything anymore. It's only for the early church. But the reason why the early church had done so good, they said it themselves because they had proof of what they were saying through signs and wonders. Right? They had God with, and if, and if you ever try to tell them that they did this, they said, no, no, no. I didn't make that man well. It's God that you crucified. And be, so that's who we have to take with us into culture, right? And, and there will be signs and proof. I mean, they found really quick at the walls of Jericho that God was with them. Then the walls fell down. And it, it wasn't because of physical strength. It's God. So go to the PTA meetings and the school board meetings. Um, um, and if they have like a, uh, like a group um, um, uh, um, and they have a march, pride march, if you're going, go with the presence of God and, 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 and speak up for God. And, and again, it's not to hate people and hit them over the head, but with, with the signs and power and presence of God to be able to convince and teach. God's plan for this world is to is to make them all disciples eventually. That's the war of plan. Teach, right? Find some way to teach, but we have to do it with such a power that, that we embrace by obedience to all the commandments of God so that we can carry his presence. At times it's not easy to have courage, as he said to Joshua, engage, but courage according to Twain, it, um, um, the way he thinks about courage is, is resistance to fear, the mastery of fear, not the absence of fear. Right, man, I heard it, man, another way. Um, to have courage, it doesn't mean I don't have fear. It means that I have fear and I act even though I'm afraid, right? It, it's scary sometimes to face some of these people um, on, on, on Facebook or on the street. Um, I've seen like clips of how some preachers are out there um, and I don't advertise. Uh, I'm not for against to go preach on the sidewalk. I did that in New York. I preach on the train sidewalks. So, so, so that's fine. But I see them 
uh, so the guy is on the thing and he's preaching and they drag this guy and make him fall off. Right, like just like I, 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 I'm a I, I, so it's scary sometimes to go there, but if, if, even knowing it's scary to still do it, even knowing it's scary to go to your PTA meeting or to go to the council meetings around your community or, or to go to a family member, they can be the scariest. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I tell them I would rather go talk to the president about it's, it's, it's false than to tell my family that they have anything wrong with them <laughs> or, or to try to teach anything or to oppose things against God, you know. But, but inaction breeds doubt and fear. Action breeds confidence. So the more you act, is the, the braver you get, right? If you want to conquer fear, do not sit home and think about it. Go out and get busy. And that quote was from Carnegie. Um, so go, right? Go and um, 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 in such a time like this, we got to go and be strong. We got to go oppose the culture and engage the opposing culture with the presence of God that is carried by the strength of our complete obedience to God. We have to be, be strong. Think of what was said to Joshua and see that it happened throughout with, with, with all the kings and, and Jesus himself is saying that we have to teach to obey all that I have I've asked you to do. And then he said something else too, lo, I'm with you always. It's the same equation. It's always amazed me to see the same equation throughout scripture. God said to Joshua, I'll be with you Go, do everything I say. Jesus said to his disciples, I'll be with you. Go, do everything I ta taught you. Right? So take a, um, whenever you're reading um, from now on, don't think that it's optional or the thing that you are, 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 are reading is not included on the test. Right? Um, it, it is included on the test. Um, and, um, and for me and my wife and our family, we have been on like a couple of years where we are applying things that we read, in, including, for example, like the feast days, right? Uh, I'm, I'm like, I can't just say it's not in force anymore. I have to see what aspect of it, if any, can I apply. But I got to break, I got to, fight with it. I have to struggle. I have to exercise this thought. I have to see how I could understand what does it mean for me today and depend on the spirit to show me, but I can't just skip over it. Right? It's, it's there for some reason. So so I'm, I'm really imploring it to take the attitude and, and we have been seeing things in our life and our attitude just like changing just by the exercise of taking things in a more serious light that everything is applicable and find out first why or if and how it's not applicable. But don't just, oh yeah, 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 it's optional. When he says, yes, you have to do it, right? Uh, and, and then the benefit we're seeing is that uh, like it's creating like a certain amount of a structure for children that we didn't expect. We thought they would hate it, but they're enjoying, like we go through reading a lot every week. And we go through it, doing like tests every week for, for them to answer questions, for us to answer questions. And, and this is all a part of not to show up, but so that we can eventually do what God would like us to do. Um, when we were thinking of having children, um, we said to ourselves, in this world, now, nah. And then we change and say, you know what? Yes, we'd have children if we expect them and would have God help, help, help them to make a difference in this world, right? To go and engage culture. And that's what we want for ourselves. That's what we want for our children to in such a time as this to be strong, be leaders at school. 
a, 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 you you know Torah and and you know what God expects. Lead in those aspects. You understand what it means. Do it. Don't be afraid to engage people in a, a nice way, but yeah, engage people um, in, in in what God ex, expects of them to do. That's the way that we don't carry the name of the Lord in vain. It's not good to be called a Christian and 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 we don't carry his presence and his name. We think everything is optional. To me, it's more of a gospel to see that how can how can God help me to do everything that he's asking me to do? That's great news to me. That God, God and Jesus through the Holy Spirit is able to, to make me a new creature, an obedient creature, that I walk in the Spirit, that's great news to see that that is possible. So be strong and go and do what God has um, asked us to do. Um, if we can stand now, um, I pray. Is there a song? Are we going to do a song? Uh, if you could, it'd be easy to. <clears throat> if you do a song, we. You want me to switch it over? Or you want me to play a song? Or you want me to switch it over? Let's see. Oh, the screen. Yeah, you can do the screen. Oh, oh yeah, a song and any song that you have. Actually, do you know um, uh, so trust and obey? Yeah, and it's an old song. Do you know that song? Uh, he has a, he has some songs back there, but I don't. But it it, 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 it uh, we don't have all of them. Okay. Um, so I I'm not the singer. My wife is, but we're gonna try to. Um, 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 like at least a chorus for this, and then, and then I'll pray. Okay, trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey when we walk with the Lord. In the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. What we do is good will. He abides with us still, and with all who will. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Oh God, you know how frail we are to meet <clears throat> our foes, but with with you, and and not just a, um, a sentimental way of saying you with us, but with you with us, with us abiding in you, with us, um, as you said, abide in me, and 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 abide in me by keeping my commandments, as we abide with you, as we. We keep your commandments. We, we are so dependent on you. Father, we stretch our hands to you. No other help we know. 
At times we might be thinking we have our own problems, much more to help others. We can't deal with certain things in our life and we may have given up and try to change the rules or think that the test is on a curve and we want to give ourselves, yeah, I'm still getting a B plus. God, I pray that you will move upon our hearts and see that you said, be holy as I'm holy, that you're expecting an A from each of us. Why? Because that's the gospel that you through Christ, through the Holy Spirit can produce in us. God, a, a way to contain, to maintain and carry your presence in this earth. That when anyone sees us, as Paul says, walk with your faces uncovered because we are in this presence of God and your glory is being reflected on us. Guys, as, as we walk, as we go to school, as we teach our children, as we interact in our, in our jobs, let your glory, because we're spending time in your presence, because we're spending time entertaining what your word says, wanting to do all that you command, God, living by every word that proceeds out of your mouth and being attached to you, because we can't do that on our own. God, I pray that we will, 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 will see and understand and exhibit the sentiment of this song, trust and obey. There is really no other way to live. There's no other way, oh God, to do anything in this life and to even engage others. Oh God, revive, renew, refresh, rekindle, refocus, and remind us, oh God, of our inheritance of our calling, O oh God, of your presence, of our, uh, of our, our, um, our mission that we each have to engage and do in our lifetime what you're expecting us to do. Bless, O oh God, this church. Bless everyone here and on Skype and wherever they are. Bless the lives that will be affected by everyone here. Allow your presence and your grace and your power to be rich and open doors and heal and, and, and bless and let your name alone be glorified. God, we thank you and we pray your presence with us for the rest of this Sabbath as we enjoy your gift to us. We thank you, we bless you. In the power of Yeshua, I pray.